Do you remember when Thor started off as a pretty deep and very complex character? And then Disney's just like, why not? Let's just make him a complete and utter joke. Flip. Oh, flip too hard, damn it! Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Welcome to another destruction video, deconstruction video, whatever you want to call these kind of videos. Me just tearing apart these characters, which they already were torn apart by the writers, studios, or whoever's horrible decisions they were. I did one for Brian Griffin for Family Guy. And Tyrion Lannister for Game of Thrones, two great characters that end up being really awful characters as the television shows kept going on. This is now a movie series I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to be talking about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And there are a lot of fantastic characters in the MCU and still are great characters in the MCU in the current state, despite the current state being very lacking in quality or entertainment-wise, and I think the box office speaks for that. But I wanted to talk about Thor, the god himself, the god of thunder, the Asgardian, the delightful Chris Hemsworth. Uh, I'm only going to talk about Thor in the movies. I'm not going to go into the comics, because then... Then it just gets all weird because the comics are weird and you don't know what's canon, what's not canon. I'm just going to talk about the movie character of Thor. And I just, yeah, the, the Marvels just was so different when it started in, the, in phase one. And we got like Iron Man and we got Incredible Hulk, First Avenger. Thor was the biggest question mark for everybody when they came out. Because Iron Man, Captain America, they're a little easier to do. But doing a whole world, fantasy world, Vasgard, and bringing Thor, and the costumes. The costumes are so weird in the comics. Like, can that work in a live-action film? And Kenneth Branagh, who directed the first Thor movie, really pulled it off. Like, it was a great movie. It was got had great action. The visuals were beautiful, the, the land of Asgard, and Chris Hemsworth, who was a very huge, was a newcomer in acting, playing the role of Thor, did such a great job. In the first Thor movie, Thor is such an a, a interesting character. He's, he's a bit of a dick, but he does have this charm and likability in him. And, alright, I guess I have to just go on his character off the movies I'm, I'm trying to not go into the comics because my brain wants to go to the comics no i gotta go to, strictly to the movies so in the movies uh thor is destined to be the king of asgard take his father odin's spot uh in the beginning of thor he gets the mighty ham hammer of Mjolnir, and yeah he wants to he's fighting against the war against the frost giants of jotunheim and stuff he's got his brother loki and his entire team with him and stuff and thor is a very cocky person like he's very strong he's very brave he's the ultimate warrior in asgard but he is super confident too confident too cocky he thinks he has so much power he thinks he he's got a lot of um What's the word? Uh, he thinks he's enti He's a very entitled character. He thinks he's entitled to a lot of things and stuff. And that's why Odin is trying to train him to be a little more humble, to be more intelligent and less more brute. And Thor doesn't listen to him. So in the, in the first act of the movie, he grabs his entire team, including his brother Loki, and they go to Jotunheim to put an end to the war of the Frost Giants and the Asgardians. And it does not work out very well. He actually causes more chaos than anything. He, yeah, there's all the, this war has been kind of settled down, but Thor makes the war a lot worse and stuff. And Thor has to, you know, be punished for this, punished for his crimes against Asgard. So his father, Odin, releases him of his title and takes the hammer away and banishes Thor to Earth. Oh. You are a vain, greedy, cruel boy! And you are an old man and a fool! Thor is sent to Earth with no powers, no nothing, and he has to survive as basically a mortal. And this is where a lot of the comedy is in Thor. It's like a fish out of water story and stuff, but. I need a horse! We don't have horses, just dogs, cats, birds. And give me one of those large enough to ride. Thor still has a lot of strength. He's still a very tough, big guy, but Thor has to learn a lot 
in the story. That's why I like the first Thor so much. It's, the whole movie is him learning how to be a better ruler, to better be to be a better king, not to be overconfident, and not to just assume things, and not to be so entitled. Be a better brother, a better son, and a better king for his land. And he learns from the humans. He learns from them. He learns their ways and stuff. He falls in love with a woman named Jane Foster. He learns all about the technology of Earth and everything. He knows how fragile human beings are and he wants to protect them and stuff. And that's what makes Thor such an interesting character. Even though He's not just this brute. He's not just this tough guy. He has a lot of charm, yes, but he also has a lot of heart and bravery. He wants to protect the people that he cares about. And he was always about, like, strength and power and stuff, but then he learns how to be more cunning, more understanding, more emotional and stuff. And he, he learns that when he finds out his brother, Loki, uh, is this was his plan the whole time. His brother, Loki, was trying to betray him the whole time. He found Loki found out that he was himself a frost giant that was taken away from his home and stuff. He wants to be now the ruler of Asgard. And Thor doesn't just try to fight him and kill him or banish him. He tries to get him to come back to be his brother and stuff. See, the old Thor would have just killed Loki or banished him back to Jotunheim. But no, Thor actually tries to understand him. He tries to talk with him. This is the learning. This is the arc for Thor and stuff. There's actually a very beautiful moment. That he, uh, Thor gives a very nice speech. Brother, whatever I have done to wrong you. Whatever I have done to lead you to do this, I am truly sorry. But these people are innocent. Taking their lives will gain you nothing. So take mine. And in the third act of the movie Thor, he destroys the Bifrost. Like, he destroys the road to cross the different realms. And it's, he does it selflessly, because Loki says, if you do that, you'll never see her again. You'll never see John Jane Foster again. But he does it because he knows it's right. He doesn't want this war to go on. He doesn't want his people to die. He destroys the Bifrost, and then bam, he saves Asgard. And Loki almost basically tries to kill himself, but we see him in Avengers and stuff, but... The first Thor just was so interesting because it was a great fantasy Marvel movie, but it is a great character arc for the character of Thor. Th this guy who was just raised to be strong and powerful and just be the best at everything has to learn how to be fragile. He gets his powers taken away and he has to learn to use his brains, his emotions, and he has to learn how to accept things. And he, d he needs to be less entitled and less brooding, and he has to be more of a loyal uh, and proud king and stuff. Sorry, I'm fixing that. Thor learns so much in the first Thor movie, and that's why I think the movie still to this day holds up. And Thor, the other movies, is really great. Like, uh, when he comes in the Avengers, he's really great. He's a great character. Uh, he's there to help his brother Loki. He doesn't want him dead or anything. He's there to team up with the Avengers and stuff. He has his funny quips in here and there, but he's mostly there to be... He's there to help. He wants to help his brother and stuff. And that's what he does in Thor the Dark World. Thor the Dark World is a shitty-ass movie, but Thor himself is still a great character who's still trying to defend his people, defend his homeland, protect his brother, even though his brother is constantly fucking him over. He doesn't care. He will always fight for his family and for his honor and stuff. And even when we get that in, like, Ragnarok, even though Ragnarok is a fucking just comedy movie... And Thor's used a bit of as a joke, but he's still a great warrior. He's not disrespected or anything like that. Thor's still Thor. He's a little more goofier. They 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 made Thor just more goofy as the as the Marvel movies kept going, which I was not a fan of them doing that. Because in the first Thor movie, he's not goofy or silly or comedic. The comedy in the first Thor movie is funny because he's from a different world, so him this fish-out-of-water story and not knowing things on this planet, that's funny, but he's not intending to be funny. But in the movies, as they come, he's more silly and cartoony, and I don't know why, but I don't think that's what destroys Thor as a character. It just kind of makes us not take Thor as serious as he should, because Thor is still a serious character. 
Uh, I think the best shining moment for Thor is Infinity War. I think he is the star almost of that movie, actually. It's a lot about him. He is now destined to hold the most powerful weapon of Stormbreaker and kill Thanos and stuff. There's not really a distinct main character in Infinity War, but I think Thor is pretty much the main character for, for me, really. He goes on this adventure with the Guardians looking for this powerful weapon because he knows if he doesn't find this weapon, the world is doomed and doomed to end. And Thor is wants to save it. He needs to save it. And this is not about his ego or anything. He just needs to keep the world safe. And honestly, uh, if anywhere, is probably Thor at his most badass. And probably the last time we see Thor at his most badass. Him holding Stormbreaker, Stormbreaker and just fucking shit up is amazing. And I actually love the ending of Infinity War when he stabs Thanos and almost kills him. And he, Thanos said, you should just aim for the head. He really should have. And that's what causes the snap and half the world is dead. And Thor, of course, blames himself for that. And that is interesting. That is an interesting story to tell. In the beginning of Endgame, Thor is just depressed and just knows that he he thinks he fucked up. Even though he really, he didn't. He didn't. He tried his best. But he has this just guilt in him that he, he could have killed Thanos and stuff. And we get a, a great moment where he actually does kill Thanos and just chops his fucking head off. He's like, there you go. Now I aim for the head. And that was the last time we get to see a great Thor. In the very beginning of Endgame where he kills Thanos. After that, Thor becomes, well, this. See, some people love the fat Thor. Some people don't. I'm indifferent. I, I, I'm not a fan of it. Uh, I, I would have been cool with the fat Thor if he actually had a character arc and he actually did stuff. All of Endgame, Thor just whines and mopes and doesn't really do anything to help the Avengers. And just, I don't know, I just was not liking that. Like, and I get, I love Endgame as a movie because it's the ending of Iron Man Captain America stories and those are, like, two of the big characters in the MCU. Thor was just kind of there. That's really it. He was there to be funny and he was there to be stupid and he... It's like they made his intelligence go so far down. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, Thor was never dumb. But they, now you're just making him stupid. It just, I did, just didn't like it. And I don't know. Just, they made him a, the joke. After, like, Endgame, Thor was just a complete joke. And I just, I don't like what they just did. I like... Endgame is such a great movie, and everyone has their awesome moments, but Thor never gets an awesome moment. Almost every character gets a moment, but Thor doesn't. I guess his moment was in the beginning, when he was still cool, and he kills Thanos, but after that, when he's fat Thor, he doesn't even get to hold me, nor Captain America gets the badass moment, and it is a badass moment, don't get me wrong, but Thor never gets a cool moment. Like, and he could have had an awesome moment, but he doesn't get a cool moment. And I know some people will be like, well, actually, that moment and stuff. I'm like, no, he really doesn't get a cool moment. He's just kind of there for the ride and being mopey and sad and saying stupid jokes. And then we got Thor Love and Thunder. People that you love. Not me. What? Just listening. To me, this was the final nail, nail in the coffin for killing Thor. Like, they, they just destroy his character in this movie. He is just an imbecile in this movie. And he is just there to be stupid funny and do things. And, like, there are things that I, I, I think could have worked was the, the relationship with him and Jane. And now she has cancer and stuff. That's all very interesting because that's, like, a Superman thing, like, Thor has all these powers, but he can't save someone from an illness. Like, that's interesting. But no, they don't really go into that. They just go to her as Mighty Thor. And she gets, like, all the great moments. And she, she it's, like, all about her. And, and it's Thor's movie. And just, Thor's just kind of there. It's, that's really it. And I don't know. Just He does absolutely nothing interesting. And all he's there is to make really bad jokes. And he makes constant stupid decision after stupid decision after stupid decision. And now they, 
the ending, there's a kid, and then uh, raises the kid, the end. And I'm like, really? That's it? <laughs> That's it? Thor had nothing interesting about him after Endgame. Like, in the, there's a lot of stories in the comics that they could have went with, but, like, they just decided not to. Like, the very first Thor movie is all about his arc and him changing and trying to be a better person and saving his realm and stuff. I don't know why they didn't try to do more shit like that. It was just... They just wanted him to be part of the Guardians and just go on wacky adventures and say funny things and punch things. And that's really all he was used for. He was never complex or... or, or compelling or he never challenged the, there's no challenging moments for the character it's just he was just kind of there and he was just there to look cool look sexy for the girls and say bad jokes like there was just nothing to his character and after thor love and thunder i just thought yeah this character is destroyed like they, they there's no redeeming that the character from the first thor and the character in Thor Love and Thunder are two very different characters. And I really miss the old school character. I think um, there is, you can redeem this character, but I don't think they will. I think Chris Hemsworth is even kind of done with this. So it's sad to see, but he's not the only character they've destroyed. Uh, they did the same with the Incredible Hulk. And uh, I, I would even say Hawkeye, but Thor is the one that upsets me the most. He was just this cool, brave, noble character. And then he just got turned into a comic relief. And a character who makes bad decisions. And character who mopes a lot and whines a lot. And just is kind of there to be this good-looking guy. And there's just no depth to him. And that's it. So, to me, that is a destruction of a character. But what do you guys think? Do you think Thor is a great character still? Do you think he was ever a great character? Let me know in the comments below. Comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like this video, please like, subscribe to the channel, and join the duck side.